just bought a new document camera, so I thought I'd try this out for some problem solving. So this is an example that deals with buoyancy. A long, uniform wood rod is connected to a hinge at point A here, such that half of its length floats in a liquid of unknown specific gravity. And we're told that the specific gravity of the wood is 0.6. And we're after finding out the specific gravity of this unknown fluid. So, of course, all these problems, they start with drawing a free body diagram. Okay, and you don't want to draw on the diagram itself over here. You want to draw this rod floating in air and put all the forces on it. So I'll do that. So here's point A, that's the hinge. Now don't forget there's forces at the hinge, so I'll call that FA in the Y direction, FA in the X direction. Now the forces you have, of course, acting at the center, this is a long uniform rod, right at the dead center of this rod, right at its centroid, you would have its weight. And it would act at, of course, this distance here. If the rod is inclined at an angle theta, then this distance here is clearly L upon two cos theta. Now the buoyancy force acts at the center of the displaced volume. So half of this rod here is below the water, so it's going to act at the center of the displaced volume, which would be right there. It would act upwards. Here's the, the buoyancy force. And this distance here is going to be L upon 4 cos theta. So that completes our free body diagram. So what we do is we take some of the moments about the hinge equal to zero. We take the moments around the hinge, of course, so that we don't have to calculate the hinge forces. And so we would have that W L upon 2 cos theta, so it's the weight times the moment arm, has got to equal the buoyancy force times its moment arm, which you can see is 3 quarters L cos theta. So now we can see that the L cos theta is cancel out. So it really doesn't matter. That's why we weren't told the angle in this problem. It's independent of the angle. And we get that the buoyancy force in static equilibrium is two-thirds of the weight. So now we need to figure out what, what the weight is and the buoyancy force terms are in terms of the specific gravity of the unknown fluid and the wood. So the weight is pretty straightforward. Let's do that first. The weight of the wood is just the volume of the wood, whatever the total volume of the wood is, times the gamma of the wood. Now I'm going to put that in terms of the specific gravity, so that would be equal to the Volume of the wood, specific gravity of the wood, which we know is 0.6, times the gamma of water, technically at 4 degrees C. Now the buoyancy force, this is perhaps the crux of the problem. The buoyancy force acts at the center of the displaced volume here, right? And half of the rod is, is below the water line. And it's equal to the weight of the displaced fluid, of the unknown displaced fluid. So it's going to be half of the, the volume of the wood. We'll make a little note here. This is because we're one half submerged times the gamma, the specific weight of the unknown fluid liquid here. So we can put that now in terms of the specific gravity of the unknown liquid. So that'll be volume of the wood divided by 2.6.
two, specific gravity of the fluid, which is what we're after, times the gamma of water at four degrees C. Okay, let's, uh, okay, we'll call this equation one, we'll call this equation two, and we'll call this equation three. What I'm going to do now is substitute equation two and three into one. So sub two and three into one, and we're going to have the volume of the wood upon two SG of the fluid gamma of the water equals two-thirds times the weight, which is volume of the wood, SG of the wood, which we know, gamma of H2O. Now we can see that the volume of the wood cancels out, the specific weight of the water cancels out, and we get the S g of the fluid here equals, what's that going to be? That's going to be four-thirds times the specific gravity of the wood. And we're told up here that the specific gravity of the wood is 0.6. So four-thirds times 0 0.6 equals 0 0.8. And that's the answer.